When someone says sundial, the image of a horizontal dial is probably what pops into our mind. It is the most popular type of sundial. Its big advantage over the other types is that one dial surface can reflect all of the daylight hours throughout the year. Before we dive in, it would help to review a few important sundial terms. The surface with the hour lines is called the dial plate. The shadow casting device is called the gnomon. The edge of the gnomon that casts the shadow is called the style. There may be two styles as the gnomon usually has some thickness to it. And where the line of the style meets the dial plate is called the substyle. Most of the dials that are commercially available are garden ornaments and not effective sundials. Two things are needed for an accurate design and installation. First, its design must be latitude specific. I'm using 43 degrees here. That affects the layout of the hour lines and the slope of the style. That slope must match the angle of latitude, making the style parallel with the Earth's axis. The style must also be aligned with our meridian, which is the same as saying geographic north or our longitude, not magnetic or compass north. It's not the same as geographic north. We can use a compass to do this, but we need to factor in our local magnetic correction. A common characteristic of all horizontal dials is that the noon hour and the gnomon are set due north along our meridian. The six o'clock lines are also set due east and west. This reflects when the sun is crossing the Earth's equator relative to our meridian six hours either side of noon. The substyle must also touch the six o'clock line. The rest of the hour lines are specific to the latitude of the dial's location and radiate from that intersection. To understand these latitude specific lines, let's look at some mapping of the Earth. Longitude is our east-west reference. We can slice through the equator at zero degrees latitude to divide the Earth into 24 equal segments. Each segment represents 15 degrees of longitude. Note that the hours are equally spaced at zero degrees latitude. At this point, we have an equatorial sundial, but that's another video. Latitude is our north-south reference. We can map any angle of latitude by drawing a line from the core of the Earth to its surface and then continuing that point around the globe. Think of these segments of longitude much like sections of a grapefruit. When we slice through these segments and open it up, we see that their width and angle are no longer equal. Instead, they are specific to the angle that we chose to make that cut, that angle being our latitude. This can be calculated mathematically, graphically, or by using one of the available software programs for sundials. I won't try to explain all of that here, but if you want to design your own dial, I suggest that you visit shadowspro.com. It is an excellent site with helpful software and information. This may help to visualize the construct of the sundial, seeing the relationship of the polar axis and the angle of latitude. The Earth itself is a sundial, and the sundials we make are miniature models of how the Earth reflects daylight and time. When the construct of this dial is positioned on the Earth's surface at 43 degrees, its style is parallel to the polar axis. As the hour lines are latitude specific, the range of hours also changes with latitude. At the equator, it is relatively constant at 12 hours per day. As we move further north, the daylight hours increase in the summer and correspondingly decrease in the winter. At 43 degrees on the winter solstice, we will have about 9 hours of daylight from 7.35 a.m. to 4.25 p.m. At the spring and autumn equinoxes, when the sun rises and sets due east and west, it would be 12 hours. And at the summer solstice, we would have about 15 and a half hours of daylight from 4.15 a.m. to 7.45 p.m. 
Keep in mind that a classic sundial will only reflect solar time, also called local apparent time. This was the measure of time for centuries. It gave an equal measure of daylight hours either side of noon when the sun would be directly above our meridian. We now use standard time or clock time to measure our days. We need to apply several corrections to solar time to get clock time. That includes a daily adjustment value from the equation of time, adding an hour for daylight saving time when it is in effect, and a longitude correction for our position within the time zone. I will try to explain this in other video segments. If you do plan on making your own sundial, I'll leave you with this final tip. Always consider the width of the gnomon when doing your layout. These lines are fine if your style is no wider than your line work, when using a string as the gnomon, for instance. But if the gnomon has any thickness, you'll need to separate your east and west hour lines by that same thickness. The reason for doing this is that you'll have two styles, one east and one west, and two 12 o'clock lines. The east style will cast morning shadows until 6 a.m., then the shadows will be cast by the west style. It will cross over again at noon and yet again at 6 p.m. I hope that you enjoyed exploring the horizontal sundial, and please consider joining me for other related videos.